Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how I vectorize hand lettering and pick out the best of the bunch. So today, it's not really hand lettering, it's kind of logo type design, and I'm gonna be showing you on my new computer exactly how I do that. So in front of me, I have got three different logos and in another document, I've got another three. So in this first document, I wanted to pick the word animal, Sometimes I like to practice with the words animal and different other combinations just so I don't get rusty if I haven't been vectorizing for a while. So the first one I've got here, which is a very bold, kind of very thick stroke brush script and it's very 1960 style and I really like the look of it. It's really fun, really friendly, maybe a bit too children friendly, but I like it. I'm looking at this as kind of like an apparel thing. So I want it to fit on a kind of a cap or on a t-shirt. The second one down here looks cool, but the legibility is like hard to read. People can't read very quick, edgy brush style calligraphy because there's too many thins and thicks and the angles are a bit different and it goes below the baseline, these capital letters and the ones with ascenders. But overall it's nicely balanced and I kind of like that. It depends on the target audience. And lastly down here I've got the word animal again but this is kind of like in a very quick gothic setup. So this is done with one of my brushes on my online store and I went on my iPad and I drew this out very quickly just to get a feel of it. Now what I didn't like about this was that there's sort of like an one ascender, which is the L, which takes up all the balance on the right hand side of this. So it's not, not the best one. Let's move on to the next uh, version or the next sort of document here. And we've got a lot of monoline going on. And the reason why I've chosen monoline is that there's a lot going on uh, with monoline at the minute. It's in style, I like it, and it's pretty easy to vectorize as well. Now here, this is me and my version of monoline, but you can see there's a few mistakes. These are all very rough at the minute, but they're just ideas that I'm getting down here onto the computer. This is animal as well, but because of the curviness on everything, all the connectors are curved into each other. So there's a bit of like space here that needs to be getting rid of. But I do like the balance of it. It looks pretty cool. Um, if it's small, it doesn't look that great though. It kind of looks like the word animated. Down here, this is a bit too informal and I just don't like it, but I do like the A. And on the third one here, this is very much like a business script. And I taught that in one of my books as well. Uh, business script is very quick, cursive writing or joint up writing. From here, in a normal setting, I would probably send some ideas to the client. But in a normal setting, um, like now when I'm just practicing, I'm just gonna pick the one that I think works best, one that's legible, one that I can read. Which would probably be the first one that I showed you, which I like the most. Even though it's childish, nice thicks and thins. And you'll be surprised, because by the end of this, there's gonna be a lot different about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of the first um, document over here. And then when I bring this in, this is literally just a picture from my iPad. So I just sent it in straight on the computer through iCloud. And then I'm going to go up to something called crop. And this is going to crop the image which they released in the newest version of Illustrator, or maybe they released it last year, but it's such a good feature to be able to crop a certain letter without adding more pictures in. So you just literally just crop it in. So we need to go and do a bit of layer management right now. Uh, so we're gonna go to window and down to layers. Everything that I've got on here will be found in this window. And basically when I bring up my layers, I've got all these different things set up. So the pathfinder and the align window are all here as well. What we're going to do on this first layer is we're gonna call this template like so. And that's because I always call these things templates whether it's just an image. Now, a lot of you may think just to go ahead and image trace it, and I'm going to show you why you should not image trace it, uh, and that you should literally go ahead with the pen tool, because if you try to, you will make something look really bad. It doesn't look much different to what it should be, but there's so many anchor points, as you can see there. It looks very scruffy and not very clean. And it doesn't give us much room to improve upon the logo, which is what I'm trying to do. So again, I'm just gonna put this into the middle. I'm going to highlight it, use my align function down here to the right. I'm gonna highlight this again, and we want to change the opacity. So go up to the top here, and just bring it down to about 20. Uh, that gives me enough opacity to see through it and on top of it. Then go ahead and lock that layer by just clicking the lock button. 
make a new layer by clicking the new layer button and we'll call this vector. And this is the vector layer that we're going to be working on. Now the main thing about hand lettering or vectorizing your lettering, logo types or whatever on Illustrator is that you've got to follow a rule. And the rule I won't go too much into, but it's all about keeping the handles horizontal and vertical. And that means that you've got to have good sort of anchor point design as well. So I'm going to show you the box method really quick. So I'm going to press Command R and that's going to show my rulers. Now I'm going to bring my ruler down and hit the top here. And I'm going to make a box around the A for a second here. And we're going to see them. I'm going to make sure that these are locked guides as well. Yeah, they're locked. So that's horizontal. I'm going to make a box around just this little stem here. And you can see what I'm doing and why. I use this method all the time to get my lettering on my anchor points perfect. You may be freaking out a bit, but don't, it's all good. Basically, all I've done here is I've made a box because I want to try and work on this part here of the A first. And the way we do this is working out where to put our anchor points. And we always put them in the most extreme curved place. And that is because we want it to look good and to use less curves or less anchor points. I'm going to start off getting my pencil up here by pressing P or just go into the pen tool, change your fill to nothing and your stroke to black. And you can use a one point stroke if you like. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and turn on smart guides. We're going to view and then I'm going to take snap to point off and snap to pixel off and bring on smart guides. And that's going to help us easily get to the different anchor points or the, the guides that we need to get to. And we're then going to just start off here. So exactly where the line or the guide meets to the A, I'm going to put my first anchor point and I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to pull to the right holding shift. And what holding shift does, it allows you to constrain the angle to a perfect horizontal. Hold shift, I'm going to constrain. And then I'm going to hold alt at the same time. And it's going to let me have shift and alt on, which basically means that I pull this one handle on the right. I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Then I'm going to go vertical and follow the guide. So get the guide, go vertical. I'm going to hold Alt and bring this down a bit. Now it does take a bit of practice to get this, but with a bit of practice, you'll be fine in no time. And then over here, I'm going to go and click again because that's where the curve is. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm only going horizontal and vertical other than this one here on the left. And then I'm going to zoom right in. And then I'm going to go and put another curve or another line here because I forgot to put that on there. So wherever there's a curve, I'm going to put a line and then drag my anchor points out. The main thing you need to worry about with these parts here is that these need to balance the weight. So you need to get these to balance on each side of the curve. Cool. And we just basically go around it and repeat the process for every bit. As you can see there, I've done it here. I'm going to go back down. And notice that I'm not just going into the next letter, I'm actually closing off the shape very slowly so I can like move the letters around a bit easier. It may look easy when you're doing it, but just be rest assured if you're struggling, it's because it takes quite a bit of practice to get into it. So there's the first letter done, which is the capital A, and that's probably one of the hardest ones to do, and that's because we've got a lot of different kind of curves. But if I just mouse over these, you should see some of the anchor points a lot of them are horizontal and vertical. We've got a few that are going off in different angles, but that's normal. Don't worry about that. We basically repeat this process for everything we do. So for the N, we're going to go ahead and bring a guide down for the N. And that's going to act as a guide for over here as well. So we keep very good consistency going. So keep doing this. Once you've done it, I'm going to show you how you can refine it very quickly. Now that you've gone ahead and vectorized your letters into different letters, we're going to now go ahead and refine it. Now, We've done the easy part, or actually no, the hard part, easy part, it depends on who you are. For me, that was the easy part, the pen tool part. But this next bit we're going to do is to refine it. So what you need to do is if you have a look at my screen here, we're going to um, select all of the things that we did. We're going to make it into a fill by pressing Shift and X at the same time. We're going to hide our other layer down below. You can see here that my L is not connected, but the refinement takes place with the spacing. Now there's a few different cheats and hacks you can do or utilize to make this a lot easier to spot. So let's do a side to side comparison of the drawing and the vector artwork. And you can see that the drawing in the gray 
is very bitty and there's a few inconsistencies. The new one, the actual vector one, looks a lot more consistent in nature, um, aside from the A down here, uh, because we've gone ahead and worked around it. We've gone ahead and made it smooth. We've used vector artwork lines. So the next thing we need to do is to create sort of a better version of this. And we do this by going ahead and making a new artboard. So go to your window and find artboards. If you can see it on here, just press new artboard. And this is gonna give us a new place to work. We're going to highlight our logo and press alt and shift and we're going to drag it and it will duplicate it to the other artboard. From here, we're gonna go ahead and do a few testing things. Now, this is really easy to do. All we need to do is highlight our logo, press O, hold Alt, and this will give us our reflection tool. Hold Alt, and then click, and it should say vertical to reflect. And we wanna press OK. And the reason why we do this is to stop looking at the logo as like words and letters and see them as shapes. And we can see discrepancies in the shape. So the first discrepancy I think I can see, even though this looks really nice anyway, and I'm pretty happy with it, is the part of the A down here. Now I'm gonna start working on this backwards to make it look a little better. And we do this until the shape works out itself. We've got a bit of a weird, awkward situation with three different horizontal lines here, and that's because of the way that the shape is. But to add more control, press plus, and you can add some anchor points in these spaces. And this will give us a bit more control with certain parts of this. Okay, I like that a bit more. You can see that does not look like an A when I'm working on it backwards. The next thing we need to work out is spacing. Now spacing is a huge part of this, but we can't work that out until we've gone ahead and made sure the spacing inside the letters is correct. So we can do this by going ahead and reflecting it again. It'll bring it back to its original state. You can see the A there is starting to now look typographically weird. So we need to fix this up a little bit and it will take a bit of time to get used to this process of fixing your letters. But it's about trial and error. So the spacing between the letter forms is a really important part of being able to view it legibly. So when we zoom out, we can see that there's a few differences here. I mean, the A, I wouldn't normally keep this in because when we zoom straight out, you can see that there's a few discrepancies with whether it's a C or an A. But for the sake of the video, there's no point in me taking it out right now. The next thing is space or kerning or tracking or whatever you want to call it. Each letter form should be readable by space. Now, negative space is important. And when I mean negative space, I mean the spaces in between each letter. So you can see on the first one that we did, or the drawing, when I just get it up here, you can see that it was all bunched together. And what I've done in these ones is I've gone ahead and created a bit more space, a bit more breathing room. And that is so you can see each letter perfectly. A way to do this again is to reflect it so you can see the spacing in between each letter forms. That's the easiest way of doing it. Or you can add like a Gaussian blur. So you go to effect, go to blur, uh, add a Gaussian blur if I can get it. There we go. Preview it, press OK. And then squint your eyes a bit. And if you can read each letter form when it's blurred, you've done a good job of kerning. Another thing you could do is just leave for a few minutes and then come back without looking at it for that few minutes and see what happens. See if you spot anything different. And again, if you wanted to go really into this, and this is what I normally do, you can start to create some guides. And the guides could be um, the exact angle that they should be at. So we can create these guides here. And then in the stroke, we can create like, you know, like a pink stroke or something. And we can start to put these around to see if it maintains an angle. And you can, as you can see here, the A is at a strange angle comparatively to the N and everything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to just bring the A and circularize it back up a tiny bit. See if that makes a difference. No, it looks kind of weird. So we're just gonna bring it back like so, making sure that the angles that we're using are correct. The angle we should be at is around about here. And the A seems to follow that anyway in the direction as to which it's pointing. Another way to keep consistency, which is a huge key factor in creating a decent logo type, is to make these guides fit the borders and give you a thickness guide. So by that, I mean, I've just like 
put these two guides here and here to make sure that the thickness of each logo or each letter form is the same. And we can do this by just copying and pasting it. As you can see here, the N is a little less thick as it should be, or a bit thicker, should I say. So all we do is you just make a little adjustment. So we just repeat this process around, we keep going around. The I seems to work well. The M seems to work well. Everything seems to work approximately just right. Obviously, there is a ton more things I want to refine in this, such as, you know, the A bit down here, because down here, this should be a lot thicker. As you can see there, we're following the guides, and this is how guides are meant to work. You, grids and guides keep things in, in a consistent manner, in a continual basis. Now, another guide that you could put down is a horizontal guide, like so, or if I just get out my line again here. We need to get the bowl height. Now, it sounds a bit strange, but the bowl height, if I just change the color for you to see, but the bowl height is the height in which the curve starts at the bottom of the letters. And as you can see, the A is missing a bit here, and that's probably why it looks a bit weird, right? And now we've got a very consistent logo type. Obviously, you can keep doing it even more and more and more. We can add some color to this. Let's see what happens when we add some uh, nice little colors to it. It's on black right now. We can add it to red. We can do whatever we want with it, but it looks really nice. I like the look of that. And that's a, basically how a professional logo design is made in like a few minutes. So the laptop that I'm using here is called the MSI P65 Creator. And this laptop is designed for designers. It's designed around creators, people who edit video, people who make logos. And I can say that this laptop is really good. I've had this laptop for a few months, so I've been using this laptop to design logos and to test it out because normally I'm using other laptops. This laptop is really light and it's super powerful. And because last time in the video that I talked about last with an MSI computer, I didn't give the specs. This video, I will. So this laptop is actually a powerhouse and it, it surprised me when I've used it. You can get up to an Intel Core 8th generation i7 processor. We've got a 15.6 inch FHD, close to 100% RGB bezel-less display. And something that will really inspire you guys if you're one of the computer lot is that it's got an NVIDIA GeForce T70 with Max-Q design. It's got two slots of DDR4 RAM, which you can upgrade to 32 gigabytes, which is uh, a lot. It's got a backlit keyboard, fingerprint sensor, and the input options for like, anything. It's got USB-C, USB 3, HDMI, headphone jack, microphone jack, ethernet cable. It's got everything you could think of. This laptop has enabled me to literally go out and do powerful editing on the go. And as you know, I do that quite a lot in coffee shops. If you've ever seen me out and about, which you probably haven't, I actually go to coffee shops and do my work. So having a portable powerhouse is actually really important for me as one, a content creator, and two, a graphic designer. Illustrator and Photoshop run on this like a beast, and the difference between this and having a MacBook has meant that I can use other programs like Cinema 4D and better programs than you can sometimes on the Mac. But giving this a go and been using it, I can say I haven't been disappointed at all with the power that this thing brings out. Especially this laptop, the P65 Creator is cheaper than other products that you can get. And I think this could be the new industry standard for students and graphic designers who are in the professional field. But guys, if you want more information about MSI or the P65 Creator, click that link down below. Thank you MSI for sponsoring this video and for giving me this laptop. Thank you. It will go to good use. If you like this video, please press that red subscribe button. Also turn on notifications so you'd never miss an update because YouTube don't send my videos to you if you just subscribe, you need to press that button. Also, if you like this video, press the like. If you disliked it, press the dislike. If you wanna see more tutorials like this, leave a comment down below letting me know what you wanna see and I will catch you guys in the next video. See you soon, goodbye.